So, now I'm going to talk about women voting and why giving women the vote was a terrible idea. Maybe the most terrible idea in the history of terrible ideas. And there have been a lot of them. But it's entirely possible that giving women the vote was the worst idea ever. Um, and I'm going to start out by making some uh, insulting and poorly substantiated generalizations about women or how women vote. And one of them is that women have maternal instincts, um, which are entirely apt when the problem in front of you is a crying baby that needs to be fed. But when the problem is literally almost anything else, treating it like a crying baby that needs to be fed is really counterproductive. And that problem, if you treat it like that, will do what a crying baby does when you feed it, and that is to grow. Um, and when you have a crying baby that needs to be fed, you want it to grow. Uh, so that's the, uh, you know, the right thing to do. But for just about any other problem, you usually don't want it to grow. And so that's the wrong thing to do. And uh, women's tendency in general, in a large number of cases, to approach problems as if they were crying babies that need to be fed. It's really counterproductive and really destructive. Um, so that's a, that's a, um, that's an insulting and poorly substantiated generalization about women and how women vote. I think it's valid, probably, um, but it might not be. It's not really important. We'll get to the real argument later. Um, if we could make another generalization about these maternal instincts, we could say that, um, Babies have very immediate needs, children in general, very immediate needs, and being as women evolved as, you know, in large part the intermediaries between children and men, the advocates for children to men, um, you know, they're going to articulate fairly immediate concerns. And there are long-term concerns as well that maybe are just as important or more important, especially in the long term, which does exist. So that could be another insulting and poorly substantiated generalization we could make about women and how they're likely to vote. Um, you know, one other is we could say that women are less loyal to the group or the tribe and that's probably a result of, um, you know, history and evolutionary pressure. Frequently, it would have been the case that a, a group or a tribe would, would be conquered by another. And the men would be killed and the women would be taken captive um, for breeding purposes. And in that situation, you know, the evolutionarily optimal strategy is not to be super hung up on your group or your tribe being destroyed and ceasing to exist as an independent entity, but to adapt and to get over it and become part of the new tribe and, uh, you know, move on. Uh, and that, so, so from that perspective, it's pretty understandable why women would be less loyal to the tribe and less preoccupied with, you know, tribal concerns or let's say in group loyalty and outgroup threats, less attuned to those kind of considerations. So that's, um, that's another, um, insulting and unsubstantiated generalization we might be able to make about women. I think all these are valid, you know, they may or may not be. Um, we'll get to the real argument here in a minute. And, uh, it doesn't depend on any of this. You know, we could go on like this all day. Uh, I'm going to stop now and get into an argument, which I think is a little bit more rigorous and a little bit more concise and a little bit more irrefutable. Um, and that is, it, it depends on only three points. First of all, men and women vote differently. 
Um, and this, I think, is incontrovertible. If men and women didn't vote differently, if they voted the same on average, then there would be no w reason to give women the vote. You know, just it wouldn't be wouldn't be a moral imperative to give women the vote if they vote just the same as men because you know giving them the vote or denying them the vote wouldn't change anything it wouldn't change any outcomes so so i think it's probably incontrovertible that women and men vote differently um that's pretty incontrovertible the second point i would make is that um voting directs violence or uh, is a substitute for violence. So all political systems are founded upon violence to some extent, and uh, the organization of violence, the application of organized violence. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what people are voting on when they vote, is they're voting on how to apply the organized uh, violence, the uh, capacity, capacities of organized violence to affect particular policies and particular outcomes, or um, they're voting to, you know, apportion resources or whatever in a way um, so that they don't have to fight about it, so that they don't have to um, resort to violence to settle those kind of questions. So you're either directing the violence or, or you're using voting as a substitute for violence. Um, and that's, I think, pretty incontrovertible as well. Uh, and then finally, that the preponderance of violence, you know, actual violence or potential violence, is supplied by men, by males. And that males are the half of the species that are most specialized for violence in particular and for risk taking in general, um, you know, through size, through strength, through aggression, and uh, also through risk tolerance. Um, and the reason being that the male role in biological reproduction is less costly. Um, and so, um, the female reproductive tract, the uterus in particular, is the bottleneck in mammalian reproduction. And so if a group loses a few males, it's no big deal. If it loses a few females, it's a much bigger deal. If it loses a lot of males, the group can still bound back in relatively short order. If it loses a lot of females, um, it can't, can't bound back very quickly at all. So... That's why males are specialized for risk-taking behavior. It's because the male role in reproduction is less biologically costly, and therefore males are more expendable on an individual level, therefore specialized for risk-taking behavior, of which violence is, is one form. So actual violence, the preponderance of actual violence is conducted by males, the preponderance of potential violence, which, you know, when you're voting, you're also, you're telling people who could potentially be violent, hey, this is the solution. Um, we're going to do this. You know, don't be violent and prevent us from doing this. And they, they could be violent. They could resort to violence. So where does that leave us? Men and women vote differently. True. Uh... Voting either directs violence or is a substitute for violence. True. Um, the bulk of violence is um, supplied by men or potentially could be supplied by men. True. Um, so when women vote to enforce or implement their preferences or their interests over and above men's, they're asking men to supply violence or to refrain from supplying violence. Um, for outcomes that aren't necessarily in their interests. And the more women sway elections, and the more women push them away from men's interests, the more tension that's going to cause because men have to enforce the election. And someday they may stop doing that.